What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In the last video, I finished installing the front lip on the Evo. I was able to sand the runs out on this side and then I got the vinyl installed on there. I am still dealing with the ASC and the all-wheel drive codes that it's throwing. Those two codes are the only thing that is holding this car back from being pretty much completely done. These are not just your regular codes, so a regular scanner is not gonna pick it up. I did pick up a somewhat high-end one off of Amazon. So some way, somehow, even if the scanner doesn't work, I'm gonna get rid of these codes. Stay tuned. In case you did miss the last video, here is the front lip that I installed on the Evo. In the video before that, I repaired some paint chips and cracks on here. I had a few sags or runs over here on this side that I was able to polish out. And then I added my stripes down here to match the rest of the car. I also added on these little scrape guards here. I was pretty certain this thing was gonna scrape at the bottom of my driveway. I mentioned it in the last video, my Focus ST had a splitter that stuck out pretty far and that thing drug every single time. But somehow I got really, really lucky. It was literally about an eighth of an inch off the ground. So as long as I take it easy I should never have to worry about this thing scraping at least not in my driveway the car actually drives just fine but every single time as soon as I turn the key on I don't even have to start the vehicle the ASC off is on there you can see there where it says ASC system service required and the car is not even on for anyone new with the channel let me go ahead and give you a little background on when this first started I was having a really weird steering issue my suspicion was that it was the steering rack after I'd already tested everything else I pulled the subframe pulled the rack everything looked fine all the bushings in there looked fine Fine. outer tie rods and the end links were worn so I did replace those while it was out got everything back in everything was lined up I did a little home alignment with my string I also marked everything at the bottom down here whenever I had to disconnect from the steering column however not realizing it for some reason I came in here and I vaguely remember turning the wheel for some reason to do something and I think that it threw the steering angle sensor off I also reached out on some of the Facebook groups just to see if anybody else had had this problem I did get some good information on actually how to recalibrate the steering angle sensor I usually like to figure out things easy and cheaply however this is a different story i didn't want to spend a ton of time trying to mess with that steering angle sensor if it wasn't the problem i could have taken it to a shop but i love fixing things myself since i have owned this car every bit of work done to it has been done by me so i just kind of refuse to take it to anyone else hence this purchase from reading online and talking on the facebook groups this alltail brand seems to be the most popular I did do some research on these things before i bought it so this model is more of the lower end of the higher end I guess you could say. I hope that makes sense. Still not cheap though. I picked this one up for 400 bucks but it is supposed to have all the same features of some of these higher end brands. For anyone out there wondering there is a maxi check but there's also a maxi com. The only difference is that I could find is they said that the maxi check is made for US. I'm really hoping it's just something I can calibrate and I don't have to replace anything. I'm gonna bust this thing open and see what we can find out. guys I jumped ahead but I did disconnect the scanner already what I did is actually erase all of the codes I want to go drive the car one time just to see what all pops up the ASC system service required is already on there still I just want to make sure that I'm not chasing any unnecessary codes and when I get back I will run through them and then just kind of explain everything that I find just pulled back in the garage I didn't film anything while I was driving but the all-wheel drive service also came on or four-wheel drive so I'm gonna connect this thing back up now and see what all pops up I'm glad I did erase everything and just take it for a little drive because there is a lot less on here to actually read this time i've gone through some of it but let me go ahead and show you so this first one right here when i click on it over here i'm going to click on read codes 
gives you this P0219 code. From my understanding that this is just something that is set by the manufacturer. And so if the RPMs exceed a certain limit, this pops up as a permanent code. It's kind of to be expected, I guess, with some of these tuner cars, especially if you are tuning them. Although this car is a stock block, it is a stock head. So if anybody did do that, hopefully nothing was damaged. The fact that I was able to tune the car with no issues, I don't think that anything's seriously wrong. But again, this is a non-erasable code. Every single time you erase it, once you run it again, it pops up every single time. And if I hit escape it'll take me back i'm going to click on the abs asc one right here again click read codes and exactly what i thought i'm going to click on the ayc and acd one read codes and again sas steering angle sensor i'm going to go ahead and get out of this and i'm going to go try to do a steering angle sensor calibration i'm going to click on service now and then right here is my steering angle sensor we're going to go to the hot functions. I'm going to click on the steering angle sensor calibration. It says if steering angle sensor needs recalibration, execute steering angle sensor calibration after executing steering angle sensor initialization. I'm not really sure what that means, but what I'm going to do right now is just go ahead and get my steering wheel nice and straight. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It says steering angle sensor initialization. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It says it is completed. Okay, please execute steering wheel sensor calibration after making a tire and steering wheel straight. I'm going to go ahead and click OK again. It's telling me that it cannot execute this because the steering angle is not within plus or minus 15 degrees. Not sure if I just need to be able to turn the wheel some to get it somewhat straighter. I click OK, I'm going to do some digging and then I'll be back. All right, I think that I have figured out the issue that I'm having. The problem is, is that even though when you do a recalibration, the steering angle sensor still has to be somewhat in range. If the wheel gets turned a couple of times or even once, it's definitely going to be out of range. What I'm going to do is disconnect the shaft down here where I did originally. While it is disconnected, I will just take my wheel, turn it, try to get it straight again. I know that this thing is lined up on the splines down there correctly, so as long as I can get it back in range, it should line up perfectly. In theory, it sounds great and hopefully it works, but we'll see. Sorry about the beeping. I don't want to take the keys out just yet. So one thing I wanted to show you guys because somebody in one of the Facebook pages mentioned it to me and I truly believe that this is going to fix the problem. I disconnected the steering rack from the steering column down there. There's just a clamp holding that top portion in. You just shove it up. Like I said, the bottom down there is already marked so I should be able to line it right back up. But with it disconnected, what I did is I turned the wheel all the way to the right as many turns as it would go until I met just a little bit of resistance. And it's very obvious once you get there. I counted that and then turned back the other way, counted that one as well. This gives me my total number of rotations. Going to the right, it was two and a half turns and there was about 15 degrees more on top of it. From there, I went back to center and then I went back to the left and it was three and three quarter turns. In total, you get six and about a quarter turn. If I divide that in half, I pretty much get three. What I'm gonna do now is just turn this thing back three full turns, try to get everything lined up and then redo the calibration. So far, so good. Everything has worked out perfect. I went back in, I recalibrated the steering angle sensor, no issues, it said completed. As soon as it was done, the ABS light actually went off. After it didn't complete the calibration the first time, the ABS light actually popped on also, so I was getting the trifecta. The other code that I was getting was the steering angle initialization. I did have to go in and erase all the other codes, and then when I ran the next diagnostic, everything passes. I have not started the car back up yet, so the codes may pop back on. <laughs> ASC system service required is still popping up. Do you want to see if I turn the wheel here, if the four wheel drive code pops on? 
and it does. After running the codes again, the engine overspeed condition is back. Like I said, I'm still getting the ASC and four wheel drive codes. If I click on read codes now, one of the ones that it gives me is internal steering angle sensor error. Obviously the first thing that you look up is it's gonna say to replace the steering angle sensor. To do that anyway, the steering wheel has to come off. So before I actually go and order one, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this removed and make sure that everything is connected up right, just so I'm not ordering parts that I don't need. Steering wheel, clock spring, all of this assembly stuff, the steering angle sensor, I got all removed. Everything actually looks good as far as the clock spring goes. Everything lines up perfectly as it should. For anyone that's wanting to know how to remove this, I kind of showed it the best that I could, but there's two set screws on the side that hold the airbag in there. Once you get the airbag out, you can take the steering wheel off. It's one nut. As always, try to mark it. Once you take the nut off, you can see my little mark right there. Then I've got a mark on the steering wheel so that I know that it's straight up and down. After that, this top piece of plastic just pops right out. It does take some force, so you do have to put a little bit of pressure on it but it is just clips holding it in the bottom piece down here you just have to release the little steering tilt mechanism you have two hidden screws going up into the bottom of this after that that bottom piece of plastic will fall out you then have one screw on top right here and then you've got two clips one on here and then one over on this side that you just have to push up and this thing will come right out of there just don't forget to unplug everything i pretty much just unplugged everything took videos that way i know exactly where it goes back in once i got everything removed i was able to turn it around i was able to look at the steering angle sensor and and it is in fact broken. For the clock spring, what you do is you turn it all the way one way, all the way the other way, don't force it once it comes to a stop. And then once you go back halfway, you should be able to line up this little eyeglass with the circle there. You can see if I turn it a little bit further, it goes away from it. If I go this way, it goes the other direction. So you want it lined up right with that little circle. And then down here, your little arrows should also match up. I know that's a little bit dark. Same thing with the steering angle sensor. You have a little eyeglass up here and then you have two arrows on the back that you line up. If you look in the center there right now, it is centered because you have the two little arrows pointing up. If I go this direction a little bit, you'll see that there's arrows that it's telling me to go back the other way. I don't know how well you can see that it's a white arrow, but it is pointing this way, telling me to turn it back that direction. And then if you go too far the other direction, you get the white arrow pointing the other way. All you do is just line up those two little black arrows pointing up in the center. How I know that this thing is broken is because those little black arrows are supposed to be lined up while the arrows in the backpack here line up with these two little bars. You can see here when I actually line them up, that's how it's lined up. And then over here, I never can get them lined up in the center. I'm not certain that that's indicative of a broken one, but that's pretty much the only thing that I can see wrong, and it's definitely something that's not right. So I'll get online tonight. I'll order a new steering angle sensor. Here's the part number. I hope you can see that if anybody else needs to order one. And once the new one comes in, I'll get it reinstalled, and then we can try this thing out again. Fast forward, it's been a couple of days. Huge shout out to the DFW Evo Club. It's actually been a huge resource. I was able to source out a couple of things through there. Brand new sensor online was around 200 to 250 bucks. I just had to drive about an hour to go pick this one up and picked it up for 80. Let me show you the difference between the good one and the bad one. So this is the bad one over here. One thing that I was mistaken on is that when you turn it, I thought that it had to be lined up with the two little black arrows that are in there. That is actually not the case. If you turn it back just slightly, you can barely make out the top of the square at the very corner. And that is what is supposed to be lined up in the glass right there. Super excited to get this thing on there. I'm gonna get this thing fully reinstalled and then do another calibration.
haven't even started the car yet. I just turned the ignition on and the ASC light has already gone. I didn't put everything back together completely just yet in case it didn't work. And then even though the light's already gone, I am going to do another calibration on this thing just because it is a new sensor. Then if everything checks out, I'll take it for a little drive. Car is back up and running. No codes, no lights as you can see. Everything looks perfect. I am so freaking excited. This is truly the only thing, like I said, that's been holding this car back from pretty much being completely done. Right after tuning it, I started working on the underside of this thing and then that's when those lights popped on. So I haven't even really got to enjoy the car. I'm really excited to take my little boy out in it. I'm not gonna do anything crazy, but I am gonna go take it for a little cruise. Just cruising through the neighborhood. Car feels absolutely great. There is a difference. When those lights come on, it's very, very clear that something is shutting down because the car just does not drive the same. A few times that I have driven it with those lights on, it just feels like something is lagging. And even just going in low gear right now, it feels so much better. I love stuff like this because going into it, I really had no idea what I was doing and was able to figure out a lot. I learned a lot. If this helped you out at all. If you learned anything from this, please hit that like button. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about anything with the car. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything else going on with the Evo. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye.